Okay, once again, hello uh, everyone and welcome to workshop number two presented by the GSC SCF uh, uh, Student Leadership Board. Uh, this workshop will be covering how to use the scientific method and what is the engineering design process. So we will try to help you write a problem statement um, and create a goal to help organize your data. So before we get, begin, we will be doing some SLB member introductions. Um, so I can start off. My name is Kavya. I go to Westview High School. I'm a senior. Um, and my project category is computational biology uh, and bioinformatics. Hi, I'm Eleanor. Um, I'm a senior at Malcolm High School. My project category was in computational biology as well. Hi, I'm Manus. I'm a senior at Canyon Crest Academy. And my project categories were biochemistry and computational biology. Um, hi, I'm William. I'm a freshman at Kenyon Crest Academy, and my project category was computer science. Hello, I'm Arnov. I'm a freshman at CCA. My pro project category is computer science. Okay, great. So a little bit about what we're going to be discussing today. Um, so we wanna cover a few things and uh, the main important things that we wanna talk about is how to create your scientific process or the scientific in inquiry, as well as how to create your engineering process if you have an engineering, um, engineering project. So we're gonna go over the scientific method as well as the engineering design process. Then we're also going to go over the components of the scientific method. Um, so this includes how to write each component as well as examples of the compo uh, components. And we will also be discussing the scientific notebook that you'll be required to create as part of your GSCSEF project. Uh, next, we will also discuss the components of the engineering design process. Um, how does it work to create every component for the engineering projects as well as some examples. And lastly, we're gonna start talking a little bit about collecting and organizing data, as well as how to test your results. Uh, during the presentation, do make sure that if you have any questions, you can speak up or send a, a message in the chat. One of the SLB members will uh, reply to it as well. Um, and then after the presentation, we will be uh, posting this recording of the uh, workshop on our YouTube channel. So you can uh, view the workshop slides as well as um, review the entire workshop later on when you need to. And a copy of the slideshow and presentation will also be available on the gscscf.org website um, under the SLB activities. All right, so the first thing you wanna look at is the two main types of projects. So there is a science project and engineering projects as well as computer science projects. So in a science project, you evaluate a hypothesis regarding some scientific question. In an engineering project, you're trying to build or design something that will solve a problem. So a hypothesis will really decide whether or not you have a science or an engineering project, because if you have a hypothesis, this is a science project. And in a science project, you will follow the scientific method and mainly ask questions like, what would happen if, or why does this happen? In an engineering project, you are trying to find the solution to a problem. So you're building a new product or process or improving upon an existing one. So this will be following the engineering design process. And another type is really a computer science project, which you can consider a virtual engineering project. You're most likely building some kind of computer simulation or program. So next, so let's see. So what type of project do you have and what, which category should you choose? So a lot of projects span many different categories. So for example, math and tech are tools needed for most projects, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your project should go on computer science or math. So you should review the category requirements given on the website carefully and choose the category that is best suited for your topic and subject. Next. So next, uh, keeping a notebook for raw data. So. Maintaining a raw notebook as you go, to, go along is a good idea. A raw notebook will contain all the data as you go through your data collection process. This will contain some important parts that you'll have in your final notebook, such as the materials list and some drawings or sketches of some things that occurred during data collection. 
This bound notebook should not be a collection of loose pages. Pages should not be able to be added or removed. Recommend, I recommend to section off pages in the notebook and put tabs or even post-it notes as dividers. Table of contents can then be updated through the process for page numbers. Next. And in the final presentation, you're gonna need a notebook that's required by GSDSEF to be turned in. Judges may be looking at this, so make sure it's clear, concise, and always has good grammar. This should also contain each part of the scientific process and what you do in that part. Use an appropriate size binder. For example, do not use a two inch binder or 10 sheets of paper. This will also include the raw data and notebook in the appendices of the notebook at the end. So here's a sample uh, science fair notebook that we have available to you to help you sort of visualize what this final notebook should look like. You can find this specific example under section D of the student resources section on the GSDSEF website. Um, it may be helpful if you want to see some examples of necessary parts of the notebook that will explain as the presentation continues. Um, and if you want uh, another look or uh, another explanation of this notebook, we have a YouTube video, I believe, on our GSDSEF YouTube channel that goes through the specific examples on this sample notebook. So the first part of your notebook, besides the very first page being the cover page, should be the background research that you've done on the topic. It should address some of the basic uh, questions behind your project, such as what is the problem and what's the history of the problem? Why is this problem important and why do we need to solve it? What have others done to test or address um, this potential problem or area of research? And why is your method the best way to investigate this? As you can see, there, um, there are a minimum number of citations required in the background research that you conduct behind this uh, problem or area of research as they're listed on the slide. Um, but if you want the best background research possible, you should try to go beyond these minimum number of citations. Um, and if you're following along in this sample notebook, this would be page two. This would be the background research. So next slide. The next section of the notebook um, would be the statement of problem, which sort of identifies the relationship that you're trying to test or investigate. Usually it simply states how potentially changing one factor or variable could affect another variable. If you're following along in the sample notebook, this would be about page three. And we also have some sample sentence frames of what this could look like, such as what, if, what is the effect of one factor on another factor? How does um, affecting one thing affect another thing? To what extent does this variable have on another variable um, sort of, uh, frames that you could potentially use. Next slide. Um, so here are some examples of what a statement of problem could look like uh, in the context of like an actual science fair project. So for example, you could say, to what extent does the amount of humidity uh, affect the growth of fungi, where the independent variable or the factor you're changing is the amount of humidity and the observed effect in your dependent variable would be the growth of fungi. And obviously these are examples and um, you shouldn't be directly copying like these project ideas, but these are more examples to help you visualize what a statement of problem would look like given context. The next part of your notebook should be your hypothesis which it, remember is for science projects and is a proposed explanation or prediction of what you think will happen. Make sure it's based on your research and the problem you've identified specifically. Um, also, this is on page four of the student notebook if you're following along. And one template that we recommend to a lot of students is the if then statement. So for example, if these changes are made to a certain independent variable, then we will observe a change in a specific dependent variable statement. And we have some examples. So if a higher concentration of aloe vera juice is given to planaria, then their regeneration time is decreased. So it's just another way to where a higher concentration of aloe vera juice will decrease the regeneration time in planaria. So 
the reason why we ask you guys to reword it to if then is because it makes it clear what your what your hypothesis is. Um, also, the Radishid experiment, which is in the example notebook, is also reworded as well. Um, and another example is if temperatures are raised in orange juice, then it's ascorbic acid concentration levels will decrease. The next section is materials, which should be page five of the student notebook. You wanna make sure that you're very specific. And if you have measurements or amounts or sizes inside of your procedure, then you'll want to include that as well. Remember, this is supposed to be a re, it, other people should be able to replicate your experiment. So these kinds of um, specifics are very important. You can also use a bulleted format to keep things simple. Um, that's totally fine. And the other important thing is to use the metric system if you're including units. So our example is with the radish experiment. Notice that it's all in metric units. Um, there's units whenever possible. So uh, if there's a brand, you'll also want to include that as well. Okay. so. Now we'll talk a little bit more about how to design your experimental procedure. So this is parts of your like methodology um, that you can also say. So you wanna make sure that you list all of the specific steps of your experiment, right? It must be detailed enough for someone to repeat your experiment. That's the purpose of your lab notebook. You want people to, uh, in the future, use it to either base their experiments off of it or see what else can be um, designed or if judges are reading through your lab notebook and trying to figure out um, what exactly you did, your experimental procedure will help them understand that. So also make sure that you have like pictures uh, that show you doing your procedures as well as the important parts of the procedures. And once again, make sure to use only metric units, uh, no feet, inches, or gallons. And here's just a, um, an image of some like units that you might be using. So next, for your procedures, you always have to make sure you've done enough trials and collected enough data to help make some um, analyzable results and help draw a conclusion. Uh, when you're drawing a conclusion, it's best if you have a large set data set instead of a smaller one because you can verify your conclusion um, with the large amount of data that you have collected. For example, if you collect just 10 versus like 100, um, data points, then the difference um, can sh be shown in like how confident you are about your conclusion. So usually the number of trials may depend on the project, but generally three to eight trials are adequate uh, and each trial should have at least 10 to 30 data points or measurements. This also shows to judges that you actually worked on your project and spent time on your project and thought about what is the best ways to ensure that I have a most uh, feasible and accurate conclusion. If you're working with plants, you'll need to have at least 30 uh, plants per experimental group and at least 30 plants in each control group so that you can verify and average the data points from like, all the number of plants and state the conclusions that you wanna do. And if you're working with human subjects, you should have at least 50 volunteers to have a um, good data set. So this is an example of a procedure um, as you can see that they have they have listed all of their materials and which species, as well as the number of, uh, the, the number of species for each um, like for each organism. Um, they have various plant names as well as they used uh, they used like a list to talk about what steps were done at each trial. Um, this is just an example, of course, you need to determine, for your project, which details are necessary. Uh, so you might have some different types of details. So you need to make sure that you're putting enough information. So if you're not doing a science project and in, uh, instead you're prototyping or building, coding, engineering something, uh, you can sub out the statement of problem and hypothesis with the statement of purpose and design objective. So this is asking why are you building what you're building or what is um, the purpose of your new engineer design. 
So this is very similar to the statement of problem, but it has some slight changes in the wording. Um, but you need to figure out whether or not your project is an engineering or a science project. So do keep in mind that there is a difference and the way you write um, your notebook as well as the way you define your goal and purpose is different. Um, so some examples would be the purpose of this computer program is to model the flow of various chemicals through different types of soil and groundwater. They created some sort of a project that helps determine this specific goal. Um, similarly with the second example as well. So again, if you're unsure what type of project you have, um, make sure you can stay afterwards and ask us and we can help uh, guide you for a better answer. Okay, lastly, um, during the breakout rooms, we will be going over the engineering design process and there are a few steps, there are seven steps listed out here in which you design, uh, test, learn, redesign the different parts of your engineering project. Um, make sure that in your lab notebook, you're also showing these seven different types of engineering um, questions or the steps that you went through and show the judges that you have gone through the entire design process. So next is organizing your collected data into tables and graphs. So this is necessary for both science and engineering projects because it helps analyze your data for, with quantitative results. So, um, there's some strategies to organizing data. So usually your independent variable will be the row and the dependent var variable will be the column, but depending on how you orient it, you can change it. Um, you should also um, graph it in a way that illustrates something that you can't tell just by looking from the data. So like over time, humans can't really see multiple data points, but if you have it in a nice curve, then it's a little bit easier. So here's an example of a table. So this time we have the dependent variable as the column, as the columns and the independent variable as the rows. So we have the weeks and time, and then we have the trials separated. And we're measuring the total grass height so that we know that's the, the dependent variable. And we have the title of the table at the top, which is, you should include it always. And sometimes you should also have a key if you're doing a line graph with multiple lines. So this is the line graph. Um, so you can see we still have the table and we're using that. Um, is the slide loading? Animations. So yeah, so we usually use a line graph um, for this type of data where we show this change of information over a period of time and we have the curve. So we have the table as a reference to create our line graph from, and you see now we have the um, dependent or independent variable of the weeks on the X axis and the plant height on the Y axis. And this is just a little bit easier to visualize. So now here's how to make a bar graph from the table. So in a bar graph, you usually have discrete um, variables instead of time, such as a Chevrolet, a Ford, and a Dodge. And usually you don't have any like type of car, you just have the types of cars. And the so right now the x-axis is the types of cars and the y-axis is the number of cars. So you can see in the table, we have 15, 17, and 10. And that doesn't really match up with the bar graph but that's fine. That's, that'll be something that you have to make sure you do. And you can see that these are approximately in the correct locations. So those were our slides um, specifically to help you understand how to use the scientific method as well as what does, it, uh, what does the engineering or design process entail. Um, we will be breaking out into breakout groups now, but before that, we would like to have a feedback form based on what you guys think um, we should add or change to these workshops. 
if you have any feedback, we would definitely appreciate it. Um, so if you could take some moments to fill out that form, um, I can give you guys some seconds to do that as well. Uh, while you do that, uh, I just like to give a reminder that the SLB has a mentorship program in which we work with you and we pair you up with experienced SLB members who have participated in the fair before to help with your project over the course of the next few months. Um, so these SLB uh, mentors are very helpful. You can get any advice on your project. You will be paired up specifically with someone who's doing your category. Um, so if you have any specific questions, you can um, sign up for that. And I think it's a very good opportunity. So if you are interested, you should definitely check it out. And I can send the link to sign up for students um, in the chat. Okay, hopefully you were able to get the feedback form link as well. I can put up the link later on. Um, but other than that, thank you for coming. Um, our next workshop will be November 12th and then November 19th. And these are specifically on data analysis and statistics. And all workshops are from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. on Saturday mornings. So please do make sure to sign up as soon as our sign up links are sent out.